nice to see so many familiar faces. As always, this event is incredible. It's the one time, maybe maybe one or two times, where you can see everyone that you ever worked with and everyone that you want to work with, and some that you may want to skip on uh, next time around. <laughs> um, and <laughs> but you know, it's, I, you know, on a more serious note, I think it is a real community. It's really amazing to see. To go through this room and you know try to get from there to here is almost impossible because you just get a it's great i mean almost nobody else seems to be wearing bright colors but other than that i feel like it's a real community um so tom quinn tom quinn tom quinn tom quinn gets a look in his eye it's 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 scary but it's it's like when you everyone who's ever worked with him knows it's this look that means I have to do something. I have to get something done. I have to be part of something. I will not rest. And that's one of the many things that, in the years that I've worked with Tom and negotiated with him and been side by side on any number of great films, I've always felt like there's a lot of people in the business who are extremely passionate and dedicated. And then there are maybe a greater number of people who, you know, just are obviously huge fans of docs. But with Tom, there's something that, that is unusual. And it's not like he's the only one, but he is someone who is just completely maniacal is probably the rest of the best word. Uh, <laughs> so again, you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, I, I would take this back a little bit. I had a little sound cue that's not working on my phone, but it's, it's a flashback sound, like a little harp music. Taking back to, I, I think of 2004 as sort of the Big Bang moment. You know, it, it kind of was for me, and I think it was for a lot of people. When I see people in this room who back then, you know, were doing different things. You know, I, I see Lisa Nishimura and Ryan Werner who were at Palm Pictures. I see, um, who else do I see? I see <laughs> um, John Banco, who's still doing Cowboy. Uh, I see Julie Goldman, who we, we were working on the documentary Easy Riders Raging Bulls when she was at Wellspring. Um, Dory Begley, happily at Sony Pictures Classics. Um, and Micah Green was working at a sales company nearby here, I'm forgetting the name, but um, uh, that, that was a relationship that we were, we were working with Micah and many of his colleagues focusing on documentaries. And this was sort of in the 2003 area, and that was leading up to what ended up what I called the Big Bang because it was the launch of Super Size Me. It was the launch of In the Realms of the Unreal, Dig, Control Room, uh, a little film called Fahrenheit 9-11. So this was sort of the moment, and seeing so many people in this room, but Tom, the first film that we really negotiated seriously on was one of those films that we partnered with uh, Micah and John Sloss and the Synetic team to bring to Sundance. And so, to me, that was sort of like the first time I saw that look. First time I was scared by that look. Um, but you know, in a funny way, it's like that ended up setting the template for me and I think for anyone that's ever worked with Tom, you know that if he's passionate, he's always thinking innovatively, he's always trying to think of ways to do things differently. As uh, you know, when we worked on uh, selling Citizen Four, we had to be very careful and quiet about the way we talked about it, when we talked about it, and who we talked about it with. So I called Tom and I said, trust me, meet me at a Chinese restaurant called Red Egg in Chinatown and don't bring any of your phones or I can't talk to you. That's all I'm gonna tell you. And that was, you know, there was no question. It was just like, okay, see you there. And, you know, that has come from a long string of films that we worked on together where I've seen that level of passion and excitement. So yes, I mean, there's, there are a lot of people and probably, you know, whoever the next person who's here in this leading light award next year, there are other very deserving people. But something about, uh, and here's another great uh, anecdote where we were selling a film called Cutie and the Boxer. You know, it was at Sundance in the middle of everything. Tom was in a screening of the film at the library and I get a call about halfway through the screening saying, whispering, 
This is fucking Buffy. It's the best thing in Sundance. Here's our offer. It expires when the closing credits come up. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'll be over in a minute. And we basically, at the end of the film, we went into the storage closet of uh, the library and negotiated the deal before the closing credits. You know, that's the kind of fun ride that happened <laughs> with Tom. Um, so, you know, some of these films that he's worked on, mean, he's, he's from, you know, by my count, over 50 films, box office cumulatively of over 40, close to $50 million. The list goes on. Super Size Me, Citizen Four, Page One, Man on Wire, Jesus Camp, Cocaine Cowboys, Client Nine, Where to Invade Next, most recently. I mean, it's sort of, I, you know, he's like at that center of that Big Bang, 2004, and has just been consistent all the way through. And we've had the most incredible time working with him. And every, every time we've worked on a movie together, it has been a great experience. So I, I guess I would encourage all my colleagues here to welcome Tom Quinn, the leading light of 2015, to the stage. Oh, well, uh, I promise I'm going to keep this short and sweet, so I'll try to get through these five pages as quickly as possible. Um, I want to thank everyone at Doc NYC, Tom Powers, Raffaella, Josh Braun, thank you for that lovely introduction. Ryan Warner, that was an incredible reel. Well done. Beautiful. Uh, I'm even more grateful to have the opportunity to accept this award in a room filled with a lot of friends, a lot of colleagues, including some of my competitors. Uh, but more importantly, uh, this room is the single most important room in film. I, I truly believe that. It's the most inspiring, talented, brave, committed, dedicated group of artists, filmmakers, and truth seekers. And it's a huge, incredible honor for me to be in this room with you today talking to you. Um, I really didn't know what to say here because I feel so lucky in my job. My wife knows this. She's like, I've never met anybody until I met you who was truly happy in their work. And uh, I asked John Sloss last night, what should I say? And he says, just quit while you're ahead, retire. Just drop the mic and walk away. Uh, <laughs> I think that's because he found out Josh Braun was introducing me. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, I think, uh, you know, launching a new company with my longtime business partner, Jason Janago, and my new business partner and longtime friend, Tim League, uh, I, I want to assure you that we're only just getting started. Um, so I, I, I'm loath to champion the film distributor uh, because we're only as good as our movies. Um, but I, I will tell you a little secret. And um, I have a three and a half year old daughter, and she, uh, one of her favorite books is Busy Busy Town. And I assume a lot of you parents out there know Busy Busy Town. It's lots of animals running around the city doing whatever work it is they do the cement mixers, the shopkeepers, the fishermen. But alas, there is no page for the film distributor. <laughs> So I, I've, she can't read yet, so it works out perfectly. So I've taken it upon myself to change around one particular page. Um, and it's the page dedicated to the brave firefighters. Uh, so I now read it to her. The brave fi film distributors must be re ready to distribute the film at any time. Sometimes the film alarm bell rings and they slide down the pole. And the only problem is that now she asks, what I do, or when I ask her what I do, she says, well, Daddy puts out fires, uh, which is not entirely untrue. Um, anyway, I, I'm extremely lucky to do what I do. Uh, you know, I would say that I love film, but documentaries have made my career as a film distributor more than just a vocation. They are the, truly the endeavors that have put the soul into my professional life. Um, they are the embodiment of truth beauty, and the power to change the world, and quite simply, they've given me purpose. I'm not very religious, uh, never have been, never will be. My wife and I have an agreement. Anytime one of us goes to church, that's it. We could actually call in, call in a divorce. Um, but uh, the movie theater is truly a palace that I go and worship in, and the religion that I choose is documentaries. Um, seeing Man on Wire at the first New York screening with Philippe Petit, was a religious experience. 
seeing Super Size Me at its world premiere in Sundance and listening to Morgan Spurlock in the Q&A, and then walking out and seeing this poster of Ronald McDonald as a pusher was a religious experience. Seeing 20 Feet from Stardom with all of the singers performing live after the screening at Sundance was like walking on cloud nine. And seeing Citizen Four at the New York Film Festival with Edward Snowden's father saying the truth is coming and it cannot be stopped was an absolutely religious experience. And these are the sermons that I remember and these are the moments that I want to be a part of and want to continue to deliver to audiences. Um, I'd like to thank a few people who, you know, I certainly didn't do this on my own. Um, I'd like to thank Michael Abdid and Kirby Dick for turning me on to documentaries in the first place. I'd like to thank Morgan Neville for showing me what it truly means to be a tireless professional. I'd like to thank Barbe Schroeder, Alex Gibney, and Errol Morris for giving me the confidence to believe in myself. I'd like to thank Eamon Bowles for teaching me how to position a movie. I'd like to thank Mark Cuban, Todd Wagner, Samuel Goldman, the Weinsteins for giving me the chance to spread my wings. I'd like to thank Rachel Grady, Heidi Ewing, and Molly Thompson for always challenging me to do better. Um, I'd like to thank Bingham Ray for inspiring me to become a distributor. I'd like to thank Alfred Spellman and Billy Corbin for challenging my assumptions of what documentaries can be and who are the audiences for documentaries. I'd like to thank Morgan Spur Spurlock and John Sloss for making me believe we can truly change the world. Uh, Diane Wireman for being an incredible mentor and supporter and friend. Sheila Nevins, never thought I'd say it, but for being a great partner. Making me laugh and always keeping it classy. Uh, Laura Poitras for giving me the courage to risk everything. Uh, I'd like to thank all of my partners in crime at Radius, at Goldwyn, and Magnolia. Um, I'd like to thank Ryan Werner. I'd like to thank Dan O'Meara. I'd like to thank Liza Burnett Pfefferman. I couldn't have done any of this without you. And especially the woman who hired me in the first place, Nancy Willen. I thank you so much. Um, she ultimately fired me, but it, it worked out in the end. Um, um, I'd like to thank Jason Janago. He doesn't get enough credit. He's been my long-term... He's uh, been my longtime business partner. He's my work wife. Uh, my daughter thinks he's my boyfriend. Um, I, I want to thank you, man, you, for being there every step of the way. I couldn't have done it without you. Um, and finally, the most important person in my life, my wife, Celeste Wright. Thank you so much, honey. I love you. And uh, last thing I'd like to say is Michael Moore, let's go kick some ass.